African History Network, host of the African History Network show. It is Sunday, December 17th, 2023, and we are live. Welcome to the African History Network show. It's been a, a few weeks since I've broadcasted live on Sunday night for the African History Network show, but we're back. Uh, you know, I was on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF, and they made a format change. So uh, none of the hosts uh, are on the radio station anymore. They switched to conservative talk radio. So, but this is fine with me because I can broadcast whenever I want to. So here is a, a story that I have been wanting to talk about for a couple of months now. And I've posted some articles dealing with this, but we're going to deal with it today. Um, hundreds of Black Florida churches are now teaching courses on Black history in response to uh, the Florida Department of Education's new social studies standards and policies from Governor Ron DeSantis. All right. So this is a program called um, Faith in Florida. And I've seen a number of different articles uh, dealing with this. OK. And I saw a piece from NBCNews.com. Uh, NBC News Now was a video from NBC News Now, and uh, they interviewed um, Pastor Alfonso Jackson of um, New Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church in Miami, Florida. OK, so when you uh, research this story, you may see information uh, and you may see uh, this uh, the name of this pastor and other pastors. Also, you'll probably see that information come up. So we're going to talk about this on today's show when I guest hosted Roland Martin Unfiltered on uh, Friday, December 15th. This is one of the stories that I wanted to deal with. And uh, Roland's producer reached out to uh, a couple of people uh, involved in faith in Florida, but we weren't able to get a response in time for the show. All right. So let's look at this here. Um Hundreds of black churches are teaching courses on black history. Now, some churches in Florida are now offering black history lessons to their congregation in response to the state of Florida's restrictions on education. In July of 2023, we all know that Governor Ron DeSantis backed the Florida Department of Education's ruling to reject an African-American studies course for its high school advanced placement curriculum. Uh, since then, there have been several laws regulating how educators should teach African-American history in public schools and state colleges in the state of Florida. Now, African-American churches are fighting back by using their own toolkits, their own toolkits to provide um, their, their flock with unfiltered information about African-American history. Pastor Alfonso Jackson Jr. of New Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church in Miami shared his thoughts about Florida's controversial standards on education with NBC News. Um, uh, Pastor Alfonso Jackson Jr. said, quote, my initial reaction was disbelief. My re initial reaction was disbelief. And then it turned to anger. Like other religious leaders, Pastor Alfonso Jackson, uh, Alfonso Johnson Jr. Pastor, I'm sorry, Pastor Alfonso Jackson Jr. turned to the internet to find the best alternative for his congregation. He then discovered an online toolkit created by an organization called Faith in Florida, Faith in Florida, which gives churches the resources they need to counter the state standards. Pastor um, Pastor Johnson said, it's up to us to be able to write our own story and to tell the truth, to write our own story and to tell the truth. Now, there was a good article from uh, Blavity.com on this topic as well. And I want to go to the article from Blavity. Uh, the name of the piece uh, from Blavity is some churches in Florida, let's flip over to this here. Some churches in Florida are offering 
black history lessons in response to state restrictions some churches in florida are offering black history lessons in response to state restrictions okay and if we look at um uh, the pastor pastor alfonso jackson jr quoted and i think they misspelled his name because they refer to him as johnson um and let's see here let me pull let me flip over to um i watched the story from uh nbc news also and i've seen a number of different stories on this topic uh let me double check something here okay yeah priscilla thompson reported for nbc news now uh on this topic all right let's continue here so now pastor uh sharon riley of agape perfecting praise and worship center in orlando uh also used the same online toolkit to teach black history lessons now this toolkit consists of 11 lessons it is not a curriculum but is it is a guide it's not a curriculum but it is a guide and i'll show you um the guide on their website the faith in florida website and there's numerous books that they recommend to to read also uh pastor sharon riley said because we have families who have students who are registered in our public school system we know that there are certain pieces of information relevant to our history that are not going to be taught okay she said this to wmfe orlando's uh, national public radio station now the florida pastor's goal is to educate uh, their members specifically the children by using the toolkits to teach them everything they should know about black history pastor riley said uh well the church is going to always be an educational institution period we teach people how to live their lives how to raise their families how to plan for their future we teach that's what we do okay so check out this piece here from um blavity.com some churches in florida are offering history lessons in response to state restrictions and this is dealing with um the florida department of education and governor ron DeSantis' uh policies now this is something that i said some months ago uh needed to happen okay and when i was on roland martin unfiltered and uh when i talked about this on the african history network show i said that um yes we need to push the florida department of education to uh have these to, to teach the correct history but at the same time our organizations in our communities also need to have classes where we teach this history our churches fraternal organizations sororities uh different community programs etc and you look at the jewish community they have cultural programs where their children learn their culture uh on, on saturdays uh, and you know we need to have things like this in our community it should not have taken something like this in florida for us to realize that we needed to do this okay we should have been doing this all along now uh here is a uh a flyer from faith in florida also uh from their website let's uh let me see let's go to this one here well let's let's this is uh something that another church is doing the friendship church and dr richard williams the second okay and this is a zoom link um it's a zoom class that they have and this is on uh wednesdays okay let's go to this one here i want to go to this next article also all right now Uh, at Friendship Missionary Baptist Church in Fort Pierce, Pastor Kenneth Johnson said he's taking action. He said it's not about religion. It's not about the church. This is a matter of presenting history 
as history has occurred. This is a matter of presenting history as history has occurred. All right, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, give us a heart on this broadcast. Okay, let's continue. He said, his congregation is learning black history through hour long video classes at the church. He said, we are spearheading an effort to educate people. Now, Ford Pierce takes part, uh, concerns and frustrations continue to mount regarding, I'm sorry, hold on. Uh, he said, uh, it's a response to the state's new policies schools must follow when it comes to African-American history, okay? It's a response to the state's new policies schools must follow when it comes to African-American history. And Pastor Johnson went on to say, quote, and for, and for others to sit in seats of power, elected officials to sit in seats of power, and then regulate for us what we can and cannot teach. We felt that we felt that that was kind of disrespectful, and as I said, condescending. But I'm thankful because it became a call. It, it became a call to action and allowed us to honestly to do honestly what I think we should have been doing all along. Okay, we should have never stopped teaching our history. We should have never stopped teaching our history. And I totally agree with this, okay? Yes, the history of African-Americans needs to be taught in every school across the country. And this is something that Dr. Carter G. Woodson uh, said as well, okay? Who co-founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, September 9th, 1915 in Chicago, who created Negro History Week. Um, the second week in February in 1926. Okay. So I agree. I agree with that. But at the same time, there are things that we can do and don't have to, and don't have to ask permission. Okay. So we can teach uh, this. Hold on just a second. So there are things we can do at the same time and don't ask it don't have to ask anybody's permission while we push the state department of education, push the governor, et cetera, to do the right thing. There's a lot of power that we have, a lot of control that we have and don't have to ask anybody's permission to do it. Okay. Uh, there was a good article from the Washington post uh, on this also. And I want to go to, there's a quote that, uh, there's a quote I was trying to find. Oh, there was an article from, um, there was a local news story from W T P V. I think it is W. What, what was that story? Uh, hold on, just bear with me. I got a number of articles here. This is, oh, this, let me see now, this NPR, this one right here. Um, hundreds of Florida con congregations teaching courses on black history in response to state measures. Yeah, this is from WPTV.com, WPTV.com. So if we look at, I want to pull this article up because there's a good quote in here. Uh, hold on, where is that piece? Um, this 
this. Let me pull up this article here. Um, it's a Florida con congregations teaching courses on black history in response to state measures. This is from uh, WPTV.com. Okay, this one right here. All right, now, Pastor Johnson was quoted in this one. Okay, yeah, uh, Pastor Kenneth Johnson, okay. Uh, Pastor Kenneth Johnson at Friendship Missionary Baptist Church in uh, Fort Pierce, uh, Florida, and he said, and for he said, and for others to sit in seats of power, elected officials to sit in seats of power and then regulate for us what we can teach. We felt it was regulate for us what we can teach. We felt that that was kind of disrespectful and as I said, condescending. But I'm thankful because it became a call to action and allowed us to do honestly what I think we should have been doing all along, he said. We should have never stopped teaching our history. And I totally agree. Now, Faith in Florida is a coalition of churches in the state and, it, and they have uh, a toolkit available now on black history teachings. Studying is not limited to Zoom meetings, according to Pastor Johnson, who also pointed to Bible studies, Sunday school lessons, and sermons. He said, quote, we know we have uh, now um, Pastor Tony Drayton of St. James Missionary Baptist Church in uh, Riviera uh, Beach said, we know we have hundreds of churches now that are using it. We know we have hundreds of churches now that are using it, and we expect more to be using it because there is a real push for it now. Now, Pastor Johnson uh, said to teach history now means a return to history of sorts. He said, historically, our black churches have always been centers for information. Many, many of our churches, Friendship Missionary Baptist Church included, were once used as the learning place for our communities. When they had no schools, when they had no buildings, they would learn at the church. So now, ironically, history is repeating the need for that to happen again. So for those that don't remember, and we talked about this uh, on the African History Network show uh, numerous times. In July of 2023, um, the Florida Social Studies Standards uh, were released. And they released a new curriculum for 2023 that will include lessons on how uh, slaves develop skills that could be used for personal benefit according to a copy of the state's academic standards reviewed by uh, CBS News. CBS News has a good article on this as well. I read numerous articles on this. So, you know, we talked about this a lot back in uh, July and August. Now, the lessons in question fall under the social studies curriculum, um, African-American studies section and uh, will be taught to students in sixth through eighth grade, according to the state standards. The lessons for that grade level will include teachings on understanding the causes, uh, courses, and consequences of the slave trade in the colonies, and instruction on the differences 
and similarities between serfdom and slavery, the curriculum says. Now, students will also be asked to describe, quote, the contact of European explorers with uh, systematic slave trading in Africa and look at the history and evolution of slave codes and look at the history and evolution of slave codes. Uh, take a look at the article from uh, CBSnews.com entitled uh, Florida's New Black History Curriculum Says Slaves Develop Skills That Could Be Used for Personal Benefit. Now, this caused a huge backlash in um, June, in, in July, and August. We know Vice President Kamala Harris uh, spoke in Florida to rebuke these social study standards. And we know also months earlier, the um, AP African American Studies uh, course, that curriculum was rejected by uh, Governor Ron DeSantis and the Florida Department of Education uh, as well. So you, you had all this taking place this year. Uh, and then this is on top of the Stop Woke Act that Governor Ron DeSantis signed in the law in uh, 2022. And this is uh, on top of a uh, nationwide backlash uh, regarding th this uh, anti-critical race theory movement, okay, which was largely spearheaded by Donald Trump. Okay, let me pull up this uh, article here from um, cbsnews.com. All right, everybody share this broadcast uh, on your social media platforms. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. Give us a heart uh, on this article, on, on, this, uh, on this broadcast. And be sure to register for the uh, online history classes uh, that I teach, as well as take advantage of our bundle pack of uh, classes and online courses, uh, visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, because you can register for that right now. We have uh, the bundle pack on sale, 76% off. You get two of my online uh, history classes, as well as uh, my 15 lecture digital download bundle, all for $100. That's all with $350 value, okay? And that's right on the homepage of our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. And you can join me on Sundays, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, for the uh, remaining class that we have. The first one is done, but it's all on demand. That's Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. The second class that I teach is Black Resistance Movements from the Haitian Revolution, U.S. Civil War, Civil Rights Movement, the Black Power Movement. 1800 to 1968. So that's uh, two, uh, Sundays, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I taught that class today. So as soon as you register, you can uh, watch those classes. Even after the course is over with, you'll still have full access um, to the classes. Okay, so let's look uh, quickly here at this article from cbsnews.com from July 21st, uh, 2023. Florida's new black history curriculum says slaves develop skills that could be used for personal benefit. And uh, in this piece here, it uh, says Florida's 2023 um, social studies curriculum will include lessons on how, quote, slaves develop skills, end quote, that could that could be used for personal benefit according to a copy of the state's academic standards reviewed by CBS News. Uh, the lessons in question fall under the, uh, the social studies curriculums, African-American studies section and be taught and will be taught to students in the sixth through eighth grades according to the state standards. The lessons for that grade level will include teachings on understanding uh, the, quote, causes, courses, and consequences of the slave trade. Causes, courses, and consequences of the slave trade, 
in the colonies and instruction on the differences and similarities uh, between serfdom and slavery. The, curric uh, the curriculum says, now students will also be asked to describe, quote, the contact of the uh, European explorers with systematic slave trading in Africa, end quote, and look at the history and evolution of the slave codes. Look at the history and evolution of the slave codes. The line about personal benefit is included as a quote unquote benchmark clarification, uh, end quote, to a lesson that asks students to quote, examine the various duties and trades performed by slaves, such as agricultural work, domestic service, blacksmithing, and household tasks like tailoring and painting. Now, the curriculum was approved by Florida's Board of Education on Wednesday, the week of uh, July 21st. Vice President Kamala Harris called the lesson plan an attempt to gaslight students. She said, quote, they insult us in an attempt to gaslight us and we will not stand for it, she said in a speech at Delta Sigma Theta Sorority uh, Incorporated's National Convention in Indiana uh, on Thursday. She said, quote, we who share a collective experience in knowing we must honor history uh, in our duty in the, in the context of legacy, there is so much at stake in this moment. Okay, now, um, and you have a tweet here by Vice President Kamala Harris as well. Uh, so there was, check out the rest of this article here from CBS News. Uh, Florida's new black history curriculum says slaves develop skills that could be used for personal benefit. Okay, so this was part of the impetus of the Faith in Florida uh, organization being formed and putting together this uh, study guide to help teach African-American uh, history. Okay, now, if we look at, uh, there was a good article that came out uh, from uh, the Washington Post uh, on this topic. And this was an article that came out um, uh, recently here. And let me go to let me go to this one. Now, this article from the Washington Post came out September 24th. OK, so this is a couple months ago. Um, just a second, let me switch over to this one. And this article from the Washington Post is called uh, after Florida restricts black history churches step up to teach it after Florida restricts black history churches step up to teach it there's a few things here in this article that I want to highlight so this is by Brittany Shamas September 24th 2023 from uh, the Washington Post And let's see here, just a second. Okay. I want to pick it up here where it talks about the toolkit. Okay, so let's see here. Let's go to I'm gonna go to a way to talk about the toolkit here. Um, oh, hell, what is this? Oh, let me pull the article. I clicked on an ad. Okay, let's pull that up again. Um, so, Faith in Florida is a non is a nonprofit coalition of religious institutions. They put together an eleven chapter toolkit. Okay, an eleven chapter toolkit 
to guide the churches and suggest books, articles, documentaries, and reports covering the black experience through what it calls the lens of truth, the lens of truth. Okay, let's go to... Let me find this. All right, right here. Okay, um, Faith in Florida put together 11 chapter toolkit to guide churches and suggest books and articles and documentaries, okay? The chapters featuring content for all ages cover a lot of ground. From uh, One chapter is called From Africa to America. Another chapter is called Race, Racism, and Whiteness. Race, Racism, and Whiteness. Now, some faith leaders uh, quickly signed up to, uh, to use it, represent, uh, representing African Methodist Episcopal United Methodists and other denominations, each committed to weave teachings on black history into their sermons or Sunday school classes or Bible study sessions. That way they'd be reaching parents as well as children. Now the church's um, involvement harks back to the pivotal role many played in the struggle to end segregation and advance voting rights. Now, Lauren Lyons, a spokesperson for the Faith in Florida Coalition, said, quote, there's always been that connection. There's always been uh, that connection. And so we pretty much said that because of what's going on in the curriculum and what's going on in Florida right now, uh, it's time we took back that power. It's time we took back that power. And I totally agree. It's, it's past time uh, they took back that power. Okay, now what is this doing here? Okay, so she said it's time they took back that power. And I totally agree. And it's past time they took back that power. But I'm glad that they're doing this now. Also, the um, African American social studies, the, the um, what is it, the advanced placement uh, African American studies class, um, the curriculum is 200 pages plus. You can download that, and something that I said needs to happen is. Uh, organizations can download that uh, curriculum as well and use that to teach this history in our uh, organizations, okay? And that is, I think we have it, uh, we have one of them right here. Let's look at this here. Now, this is the uh, Florida Social Studies uh, Standards that was released in uh, July 2023 right here florida state's academic standards social studies 2023 okay so uh and this is at uh florida department of education.org okay fldoe.org florida department of education.org so you can check this out but the i have the curriculum from for the um advanced placement african american studies class and i have that somewhere here in one of these tabs that's open just a second let's find that that is Where is that? Okay, we got to find that because uh, you can download that one and use that in the curriculum also. Let me 
find it. This is uh I think you can get it right here. Adopt AP African American Studies, uh, learn about the courses. This is at apcentral.collegeboard.org, apcentral.collegeboard.org. And let's see here. I know I have this bookmark in Firefox. Okay, yeah, it's right here. Okay, let's see. Here's the PDF of it, it's 294 pages. Okay, right here, Af uh, AP African American Studies Operational Course Framework Project and Exam Overview, Effective 2024-2025. Um, AP African American Studies, yep. Yeah. Okay, this is it, it's 294 pages. This is at apcentral.collegeboard.org. So you can take elements of this and teach this um, in our community centers um, churches, everything. Okay, so uh, page 23, AP African American Study Skills. Uh, let's see here, what is this? Okay, unit one, page 24, Origins of the African Diaspora. This unit is five weeks. They deal with uh, what is African American studies, um, the African continent and varied landscape, population growth and eth ethno-linguistic diversity, maps showing the movement of Bantu peoples, languages and technologies, Africa's ancient societies, image of Aksumite uh, coin showing King Azana, circa 340 to 400, Image of the Knox sculpture, circa uh, 900 uh, BCE before the Common Era to 200. The Sudanic empires of Ghana, Songhai, and Mali. Learning traditions, okay, the Sanjata story, glimpse of a, a Mandy epic. Okay, so then you have um, indigenous cosmologies and religion syncretism. Okay, they talk about uh, Yoruba, the, uh, they talk about Ifa amongst the Yoruba culture and trade in, su in Southern and East Africa, West Central Africa, the Kingdom of Congo. Okay, uh, excerpt of letter from uh, uh, Nzinga uh, Bimba to Portuguese King Jao III. They, they're talking about uh, Queen Nzinga dealing in the Congo, uh, 1526 when, um, uh, to, Letter from Nzinga. Um, is, I think that was, let me see something. Hold on just a second here. That was 1626, but, um, okay, they're talking about in dealing with King uh, Alfonso, that's before um, Queen of Zinga, sixteen twenty six. This is yeah, the, uh, this is before that. Okay, I've got it. All right, yeah, Alfonso the first of the Congo. Um,
Okay, yeah, because Quinn and Zinga was 1626. All right, now, the image of triple crucifix, 16th to 19th century, uh, kinship and political leadership, illustration of Queen Njinga or Nzinga, seven, uh, 17th century, global Africans, then um, they talk about what is African-American studies, and so it, this takes you through the whole curriculum here, okay? So you can create lessons from this. You don't have to teach the whole thing page by page, but you can create lessons from this. All right, so let me post this link here. All right, now I want to go back to the piece from um, WashingtonPost.com because this was an article from September 24th, 2023. After Florida restricts black history, churches step up to teach it. I've seen a few articles on this and some stories, but there should be a lot more coverage on this and encouragement, especially in African-American media. Okay. There should be a lot more coverage on this and encouragement. I would think in African-American media, because it's one thing to keep covering this story and talking about governor Ron DeSantis, talking about the Florida department of education and they're wrong, they shouldn't do this, et cetera. But here we have African-Americans taking power back, taking some control of the situation and implementing uh, programs to teach our history. And this is not getting as much media coverage as Governor Ron DeSantis, as the Florida Department of Education, as their new social studies standards and the outrage, the protest behind it, the, the marching behind it, all that. What these African-American churches are doing should get, I would say, just as much coverage as the protest against Governor Ron DeSantis and the Florida Department of Education. But sometimes I'm coming to realize that we only want history when white people tell us we can't have it sometimes we only want you know things to deal with african-american history or black history when white people tell us we can't have it now for many black churches discussing black history isn't new but formalizing it through a teaching pledge toolkit and dedicated lesson is the idea from the coalition's, uh, the idea came from the coalition's executive director, the Reverend Rhonda Thomas, the Reverend Wand Rhonda Thomas. She had been dismayed by the passage of the 2022 Stop Woke Act legislation championed by Governor Ron DeSantis, uh, who is a failing 2024 presidential uh, candidate. His, his presidential campaign is tanking, tanking and rightfully so. And this uh, policy coming from uh, Republicans in uh, Florida limits classroom discussion on, of race. Now, this past spring, as the uh, state said about revising black history education standards to conform to the law, uh, Pastor Rhonda Thomas decided to take action. She would mobilize as many faith leaders as possible to teach, quote unquote, raw and real African-American history from their pulpits, raw and real African-American history from their pulpits. Now, her resolve was only strengthened when the new standards were released this past summer with a line mandating middle schoolers be taught, quote, how slaves 
develop skills which in some instances could be applied for their personal benefit now faith in florida's website now greets visitors with a pop-up message imploring them to sign the pledge and imploring them to sign the pledge quote because black history is american history it declares okay so uh, read the rest of this uh article and let me see is there anything else in here i want to cover okay if we look at page four of this article um while creating the toolkit the members uh, uh, of a special task force had a few goals in mind While creating the toolkit, the members of a special task force had a few goals in mind. They wanted to cover a time span from before slavery to modern times, including the Middle Passage, white, suprem white supremacy, and race riots, the Black Panther Party, and what they called the criminal injustice system. We don't want to white, whitewash anything, said task force member Marlo Jones, a faith in Florida organizer in Pasco County. We want to tell the truth. We want to tell the truth. The response since July has been overwhelming. As of uh, this month, more than, uh, so at, this article came out September 24th, okay? So basically as of September, 2023 uh there have been more than 260 religious institutions that have filled out a pledge to teach black history and it isn't just black congregations responding there are also synagogues catholic churches and mosques nor is it only in state houses of worship faith in florida is now getting requests to build out an entire curriculum, something that Pastor Rhonda Thomas hopes to tackle in time for the second half of the school year. Quote, I had no idea it was going to go this far. End quote, she said. I had no idea it was going to go this far. Now, her church was among the first to get it started. Its initial foray was an early morning session taught by uh, Pastor uh, Rhonda Thomas and her son uh, on a Saturday in August. Her husband, the Reverend uh, Ranzer Thomas, amplified it during a Sunday service later that month in a sermon centered on learning uh, and centered on leaning on faith in times of struggle. He wove in the year long bus boycott in the mid 1950s in Montgomery, Alabama. So that was. December 5th, 1955 through December 20th, 1956. Um, and then he uh, wove in Bloody Sunday on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. That was March 7th, 1965. A decade later, and uh, the March on Washington, August 28th, 1963. Such historic moments, he told congregants, must now be taught by, quote, people like you and I. Quote, yes, there is a fight. Yes, there is a fight of wanting to remove history from the school. But who was the first teacher that you ever met? You will be reminded that this first teacher is at home. You will be reminded that this first teacher is at home. OK, so check out the rest of this uh, article. It's a very good article that gives an update on what's taking place in florida i think that there needs to be continuous articles written about this and then as we go into kwanzaa and then african-american history month well dr K dr king day 2024 african-american history month 2024 as well there should be a continuation of this juneteenth 2024 
Marcus Garvey's birthday, August 17th, Fannie Lou Hamer's birthday, Malcolm X's birthday, all of this. So this should be something adopted, I think, across the country, this toolkit, okay? And you can add to it. I'm not saying you have to stay within the confinements of the toolkit, but this could give this can be a starting point for a lot of people. Okay. Um, if we look at their website here and let's see here, if we look at their website, let's go to, um, faith in Florida.com or.org. Okay, this is uh, the website right here, faithinflorida.org. And there's a message from a Faith in Florida. Pastor well, we under Thomas right here also. Um, but if we click here on Black History, right? Black History Everyday Pledge pledge today so you can click right there on the pledge then they have the 11 lessons uh black history black culture and black lives are are currently under attack from chattel slavery lynching and jim crow segregation to redlining the war on drugs from redlining the war on drugs uh, and mass incarceration to voter suppression, the school to prison pipeline and police brutality, the list of oppressions perpetrated against black people in this country is endless. We continually find ourselves not just uh, fighting against the systems that perpetuate these racist oppressions, but fighting against these same systems that want to uh, erase this part of America's heinous past, especially in the state of Florida. So keep in mind, Florida is one of the first states to have felony disenfranchisement laws when Florida wrote their state constitution in 1868 and um, African-Americans were 48 percent of the Florida population. So they were doing this. Uh, you lost your right to vote for life if you were convicted of a felony. They did this on purpose and they were targeting crimes that they felt African-Americans were more disproportionately uh, predisposed to committing or what have you. And they said they did this to prevent a Negro legislature. They did this to prevent a Negro legislature. They feared African-Americans having political power. So they were trying to suppress the vote. They didn't fear us having, they didn't fear us exercising. They feared us voting and gaining political power and passing laws that white people then had to follow. And this is why I say we have to stop telling African Americans to exercise your right to vote. If you want to exercise, you go to the gym and work out. You don't vote for exercise, you vote for power. You vote for black political power. You vote for policies that are beneficial to you, your family, and commute and your community, and policies that are good for African Americans are good for America in general. Okay, now if we look here at um this uh briefly, so they talk about uh Africans in America. And these are books that they recommend. They came before Columbus by Dr. Ivan Van Sertima, uh, Before the Mayflower by Lerone Bennett Jr. I, I use Before the Mayflower uh, in my classes. Uh, I use, uh, instead of um, They Came Before Columbus, uh, we may, may cite a couple of things from They Came Before Columbus, but I use Dr. David M. Hotel's book, The First Americans Were Africans Documented Evidence. I use that. That's a more up to date book. Uh, Christopher Columbus and African Holocaust, Slavery and the Rise of European Capitalism by Dr. John Henrik Clark. That's a book that I use. Uh, the, it, it, the Transatlantic Slave Trade and the Enslavement of Black Bodies. So they do with that section. They recommend books here um, like Slave Breeding, Sex Violence and Memory in African American History. Uh, also, they were uh, they were her property. Uh, White Women as Slave Owners in the American South by Stephanie E. Jones Rogers. Uh, we use excerpts uh, from her in the class. Okay. Uh, they uh, recommend some documentaries also. Um, they recommend slave narratives from 
the autobiography uh, of from slavery autobiography from Booker T. Washington to narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave uh, from Frederick Douglass, one of his three autobiographies. Then you have uh, personal accounts of fighting for freedom. That's another lesson. OK, you have. Um, racial terrorism and civil unrest. So this deals with lynching and the Jim Crow South. Crusade for Justice, the Autobiography of Ida B. Wells. Uh, you have race, racism, and whiteness, race, racism, and whiteness. The Social Construction of Race, Racism, and Critical Race Theory. Books, The Myth of Race, The Troubling Persistence of an Unscientific Idea by Robert Wald uh, Sussman. Okay, so they list a number of books here. Uh, when Affirmative Action Was White, An Untold History of Racial Inequality by Ira Katz, uh, Katz Nelson. White by Law, The Legal Construction of Race by Ian, um, who is this? Uh, by Ian Haney Lopez, White by Law. This was a book that I, uh, I saw... Um, um what's her name the attorney um and i met her before man what's her name hold on I follow her on instagram she she mentioned this recently um it'll come to me i gotta All right, I have to, I have to see what was her name. Uh, she was on CNN. Um, Angela Rye. Angela Rye mentioned uh, this book recently in one of her videos on Instagram. Uh, Black Faith as Resistance. Black Faith as Resistance. And then the Criminal Injustice System. Um, Okay, so read the rest of this. So check this out at black uh at faithinflorida.org, faithinflorida.org. All right. So I think that's going to do it. I'm out of time here. It's been uh it's been hectic. If you like this type of information, be sure to register for the online uh, history classes that I teach uh, now on Sundays. And uh, we did a class today, but I'm going to do uh, a part two on Monday. It should be Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. And you can take advantage of the, um, we have the, um, Black Empowerment Friday uh, weekend uh, bundle that has been extended. Uh, it's 76% off. You get my two online history courses, and these are 30 plus hours in these courses. They're normally about 12 weeks. This time around, it went longer than 12 weeks. Um, you get Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, where they didn't teach you in school. That's the first class that I teach. And we deal with thousands of years of history, what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. OK, so that class is complete. So it's all on demand. You don't have to worry about being in class at a certain time. And then the second uh, online course that you get in this bundle is Black Resistance Movements from the Haitian Revolution, U.S. Civil War, Civil Rights Movement and Black Power Movement, um, 1800 to 1968. OK. And we deal with that, uh, uh, and we deal with history from uh, that period of time, 1800 to 1968, to see what leads to uh, the Civil War taking place. What are the laws and policies put in place? We deal with the Reconstruction era, uh, Great Migration, Jim Crow era, World War One, World War Two, Civil Rights Movement, the Black Power Movement. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll 
teach um i did part of the class today we'll we'll finish up the next part of this class session um monday december 18 7 p.m eastern standard time but in this class session we're dealing with the period of history uh, of the red summer of 1919 the marcus garvey unia movement universal negro improvement association so we're talking about the early 1920s dr carter g woodson and the uh, association for the study of negro life and history founded september 9th 1915 in chicago and then we deal with the creation of negro history week the second week in february 1926 so so we're dealing with all of that and then uh we're dealing with the great migration uh, which begins right about 1915 1916 and then also um, the stock market crash of october 1929 and the uh world war and world war ii okay because we uh, last class we talked about world war one and the harlem hell fighters um and uh, african-american men now are coming back home to uh, racism and racial violence and they're fighting back uh, African-American men, former World War I veterans, they're fighting back using their military skills to fight back, okay? And there was a big race riot in Chicago in 1919, July of 1919, and African-American World War I veterans are out in the street in their uniforms fighting back. Okay, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me, forward slash the AHN show. And this helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, uh, keep broadcasting, et cetera. Uh, we have, so we have the information right here on the homepage of our website and the link is there as well as the uh, QR code also. So when you click on the Cash App link, um, it shows you the QR code and this helps us uh, keep doing the research, um, finance the research, finance the shows, pay for all these services that I use, et cetera, okay? So give us a thumbs up, give us a heart, give us a like. Hopefully you learned a lot uh, on today's show. And uh, support the African History Network. Follow us on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Turn on live notifications so you know when we go live. And... Um, We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, John Ray. He said, "I'm still working with JohnRay.com as his website. Financial strategies, do-it-yourself credit repair." Okay. Uh, all right. So support the African History Network, and we'll talk to you next time. Remember, right now is corrects wrong behaviors. Not over till we win. We're kind of forever, and we'll see you in class. Peace. <laughs>